Garrett, Alan here. Thanks everybody for watching. We have another fantastic conversation in the one Chicago universe. We're talking Chicago Med with our guest, Lila Rich Creek Estrada. She plays Dr. Cuevas, opposite of Oliver Platt. And in this wonderful world, we've we just love talking to folks from these shows. I, my favorite is Chicago Med between us, just to be honest. Good um, answer. I mean, good they're, answer. yeah, Me I know. Too. <laughs> um, they're all good, but I love Chicago Med. And uh, first of all, thank you for your time. I appreciate you hanging out with me today and chatting about this fantastic character and the show. Thanks for hanging out. Of course. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for well, having me. Well, this is absolutely. Well, this is a lot of fun because everybody loves your character. And Dr. Charles, played by Oliver Platt, hasn't had somebody opposite of him per se as a an intern or whatever the case might be for a few seasons. So we've been waiting for this for a while for that to happen again. And your character is is very interesting. I don't know how much you read of the fan sites or what people have to say, but we really like it because you push oh, him. Good. Good. I read nothing. So that's so nice to hear. Yes. So let's talk about this because you appeared um, in one episode and now you've come back for several more. How did this all come about for you outside of like the traditional audition and things like that? Had you been watching the shows prior to getting the part? Because you've done a lot of other big things too in your career. Yeah, um, I was absolutely familiar with the shows and the franchise pre, you know, coming on. Um, I hadn't watched every episode like a lot of the the diehard fans. Um, also, side note, after I booked the job, my mom binged all seven seasons in two months. Oh, wow, that's to get a ready. lot. To... <laughs> I was like, that's that's only something a mom would do like yeah. truly like that is mom energy. Um, but, um, so yeah, I was absolutely familiar and they're really fun and interesting because it's the whole world. It's not just this one hospital with these doctors. Like you get to see the whole world of Chicago and yeah. saving lives in, in, in different ways. And, um, yeah, so, uh, so then I, I got the audition and, um, you know, put a lot of me into it because Nellie originally wasn't, um, you know, you get a breakdown of what the character is. Sure. And uh, she didn't have a lot of description from the get go, which is always really fun for me because then I'm just like, all right, well, I'm going to put just my whole spin on it and uh, put a lot of me into it. And, um, yeah. And then from there, I got signed on for a few episodes and they've just kept adding more and more episodes. And, you know, we're on a break right now, but I go back after the holidays and I get to do more. And yeah, it's been it's been really fun. And it's been really um, an easy uh, show to integrate into. That's good. That was going to be my question, because oftentimes when you come in, well, as a day player, typically, and you're coming into like this big, well-oiled machine, it, it easily goes really well, but then it could potentially go the opposite direction, not in a negative way, but you're just getting used to people and it's somebody new and you're integrating in your character. But the fact that, and it's no surprise because you're very talented and your character is just phenomenal. I mean, it's fun to watch her navigate this world and it's not the typical doctor attending intern kind of relationship because your character comes in very hot <laughs> and that yeah, I think does. was she comes in very <laughs> hot which I like and it's not surprising that she's almost instantly earned the respect of Dr. Charles so to speak because of the fact that she's open to suggestions but also she also kind of runs him a little bit if that makes any sense at least that's the perception i don't know if that's the intent but just watching sure. you that's kind of and it's cool that's why i think it's fun to shake things up a little bit yeah it's it's um it's really interesting because she's so she's so human she's such a well-rounded human like she comes in she's clearly very intelligent and knows what she's talking about but it's in such a different way to to all of uh, to, to dr charles 
because, you know, she's new school and she knows things by the book. And she's like, well, this medication does this and this is yeah. how much you give and blah, blah. But he comes from such a different world of experience, like right. decades of experience and intuition and to see that meld. And also I love that she's a badass and has a backbone. But then as the, as the uh, episodes go on, you see her vulnerability and you see that, you know, she doesn't always trust her instincts and she hides behind all of her knowledge. And I just think, I just think this show in particular does a really good job of writing well-rounded characters, human characters that you don't just get to see. She's not the token strong one right. or bitchy one, as people <laughs> might say, like she's not, she has just right. because she's strong doesn't mean she's also not human and vulnerable and scared and, you know, but will stand up for herself and, and, and speaks her mind. And that's what I think is really cool about her. I like that description because I think if it were in the reverse and it was like, you know, a trope, like a male intern, it might be considered like, I don't know. You know what I'm, you get what I'm saying? Like, I, totally. Yeah, like, and I like the term bitchy. That's funny. Um, it kind of caught me off guard a little bit, but it makes <laughs> sense because yeah, she's not, it's not aggressive. Like the most recent episode, uh, you know, where you were dealing with very delicate and intense subject matter, uh, your scenes with Jesse, we've had her on the show a couple times. It, it's just fun to watch all of that come together and play really well. And to your point, I think it's fun because you do get to meet other characters from the world that come in. Um, and, you know, we've we've been covering all of these shows really since the beginning and have talked to pretty much everybody at least once or twice from all of the seasons. And cool. when when we found out that it was being let out during a one Chicago press day that we interviewed Oliver for a, a quick few minutes and he mentioned he was foreshadowing a little bit that your character would be coming in and mm. he would be facing challenges uh, that he had normally faced as an old school doctor. I'm very curious. He mentioned that he did his own sort of psychiatrist psychology type of training before getting the role. Did you do not method, but did you kind of sort of look at what that position might kind of be like and what it would be coming in as somebody who is fortified and stands on her own uh, and but also is kind of you know still in that mentee type of position although you don't play it that way because I mean you could run the show quite honestly I feel your character oh. would do really <laughs> well with that thank you yeah um no yeah definitely I definitely wanted to um wanted to uh, do my research and, and also you have to, you have to think that the turnaround, I got this job and then I flew out three days later to, to start. Oh, wow. So I do as much research even per episode and whatever case that we're dealing with as humanly possible. I do a lot of reading. My next door neighbor actually um, is studying to be a therapist. Okay. So that was really helpful to talk to her about that. And um, yeah, watch a lot of YouTube on uh on that kind of stuff. And um, Oliver's told me about the the type of research that he did, which was just so in-depth and so cool that he was able to, to make that happen. But yeah, I definitely familiarize myself with every, um, every mental illness that we're looking at. Um, you know, with the last, uh, the last episode, the sexual assault, yeah. um, I do a lot of reading and research on that kind of stuff too. So I just know, you know, have a better handle on what I'm talking about. I never want it to look like I'm just an actor saying words. I want to be able to have an understanding of what I'm talking about to make it yeah. feel real and to totally. do it justice. Yeah. yeah. Comes through a hundred percent. And I also like the descriptor that he gave, you know, he also, it's sort of like a street vendor of psychology a little bit too. Cause a lot of the staff he oftentimes will find himself interacting with them and solving their issues, mm -hmm. not just dealing with cases that come in. I mean, we've interviewed everybody from like the writers to the creators to the showrunners. So I know like cool. and that this is all as authentic as it could possibly be. Um, yeah. Outside Absolutely. of, you know, the steamy romances that might be happening <laughs> between characters. So the big question I always ask, have you experienced Chicago winters yet? Have you had the opportunity to dive in? Has it, uh, 
everybody, male, female, doesn't matter. They say it will put hair on your chest, so to speak, because I lived there. It's freaking cold there when it gets cold. <laughs> I mean, when I first got to set in July, everybody was like, well, if you're here in January, like get ready. I'm from LA. I grew up in LA. It's going to be 80 degrees tomorrow in yeah. November. And so I have literally no concept. And my last trip there uh, a week ago, whenever that was, I, I have no concept of time anymore. Um, my last trip there, it was uh, 35. And I was like, what are we doing? Like, this is, this is the coldest I've like ever experienced or maybe in like decades. And everybody, and everybody's there is just not really like in a light jacket where I'm like in my puffer, beanie, scarf, <laughs> layers, Uggs. Um, so I haven't experienced, when I go back in January, that's going to be, Giddy up. I just bought so much stuff off of Uniqlo to just keep me warm. They have heat tech. They have a heat tech line, uh, on Uniqlo. I was like, give me all of that. I need to stay warm. This well, LA it's funny. Yeah. yeah Steven it. Weber said they often tease that cast uh because the other two shows are always out in the elements filming uh pd they put them in like light jackets and all this wild stuff and it's like it gets cold there but you all get to stay inside most of the time <laughs> because even though you all sort of share the same space so to speak yeah. um funny one last question again yeah. you have done so many great things and then when this was announced there was a lot of write-ups you've been a part of some other shows where did the acting journey storytelling journey begin for you Lila like at what point was it like okay I want to do this well I think I came out of the womb wanting to be a performer like I don't, there wasn't a moment for me like a lot of people okay. have and then I saw this performance and I knew that it was I just kind of came doing that. I was a competitive dancer. I was a, a singer um, with a nonprofit organization. I went to performing arts high school and I went to performing arts high school for theater. And um, as I was approaching, you know, my junior, senior year where you decide like what you want to do after high school, I told my dad, I was like, I want to go to UCLA for theater. And he was like, why? I was like, well, because I want to be an actor. And he was like, well, then just go do it. Just go start auditioning. Yeah. You don't need to go get a degree to act. Just go do it. And I was like, oh, my God, I didn't even know that that was an option. So I just from my performing arts high school, I just jumped right in and I got an agent and manager and just started auditioning. And I feel like those first four years of auditioning were like college because I was oh, making yeah. so many mistakes, just real life college, you know. Um, and I was just learning so much. And then from there, yeah, I started working professionally and I've been very lucky and fortunate that this is what I get to do. Um, I'm very, very grateful. And, um, yeah, so if, I feel like I came to earth, this earth wanting to do that, not really having like a moment that pulled me in, but just from the beginning, that's where I was at. And here you are on a fantastic show. We have one episode left before the winter break. Mm -hmm. I haven't watched them yet, but uh, they're sitting in the DVR ready to stream. I cannot wait to see you all always leave everybody on a cliffhanger. And then we have to wait until <laughs> next year to get new episodes. But that's okay. That's what keeps things interesting and exciting. Well, congratulations on all of your success. This character you. that you have created absolutely is just fun. I cannot wait to see what direction that you and the writers take it. Um, and much continued success uh, and all of that. Uh, thank you for hanging out today. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Brad. This was so much fun. I'll Absolutely. come back anytime. <laughs>